I wish I was big. So Big the Musical is a story based on the 80s movie starring Tom Hanks. Young Josh makes a wish to become big after he's embarrassed among his slightly taller friends. Um, and, and when he does become big, he gets all the perks of being an adult, but all the horrible stuff like responsibility and caring about other people's feelings and falling in love and all the stuff that comes with that. I play uh, George McMillan, who owns the uh, toy manufacturers, where Josh is, uh, is employed eventually when he becomes big. And um, he saves all our lives in many ways. And then how I come into the story is Josh gets a job at a toy shop and I work at the toy shop and I'm like a proper like boss business woman. Um, and he breaks me down, brings out my soft side. Um, and yes, yeah, she basically falls in love with Josh and thinking that he's a, a man, obviously. <laughs> the, the feeling when they called me and said, okay, it's actually going to London now. All of that set pieces are coming out of storage and it's gonna happen. It just felt like a dream because I'd spent so much time telling aunties and uncles and cousins, yeah, maybe one day. And actually I wasn't lying. Me and Jay felt a bit like kids at school on the first day of school. Um, even though he'd obviously done it before, there was a lot of new uh, members of the ensemble and new leads and stuff. So it was still like quite an overwhelming thing. And I don't know why, but just in life, it's normal to just have that moment of doubt, like, oh God, I hope I can actually do this now. <laughs> um, but then as soon as we got into the rehearsals and started to like feel our way through it, it was, it was good. And we had a really fun process rehearsing for the show. I feel very honored to be here um, because um, although I've done a lot of musicals in my, in my long, long career, um, for me, it's something slightly different because people are used to seeing me do that big, brash Broadway belt voice, uh, which I do get to do in Act 1. I get to do Good Morning to Mom. But then in Act 2, I'm, um, I feel very lucky because I have the most beautiful ballad called Stop Time, um, which is sort of the, the, the one tune that people knew from when it was on Broadway in, in 96. People sort of remembered that song, and it's sort of been used um, as a classic since from the show. So, um, and it's just the most beautiful, tender song. And it's so nice for me as an actress just to actually stand on a stage and sing a song without any gimmicks around me or any showbiz going on. You've got fantastic leads. Jay McGuinness, who plays Josh, is so charming. And in fact, he kind of is Josh in a way. Kimberly Walsh, and she has a wonderful rapport with Jay. They have a, 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 a great relationship. And during rehearsals, it was a joy to watch them work because they laughed all the time, and they still do. Wendy Peters, who is known for Coronation Street, but she came from musical theatre. She she's a marvellous singer. We do have a big army of children. We have two sets of the ensemble children, and then we have three sets of Billy and Josh's. Um, Josh is my son, and then Billy's his friend next door. Um, they are all absolutely brilliant. They are the nicest kids. Um, they, you know, um, they do as they're told. They get on stage. They give it their all. But the nice thing for me is, especially in Act Two, when I sing just after I sing Stop Time, before Stop Time, I have a little scene with the the the, the, the child, the teenagers that are playing Billy. Um, and the nice thing is, they're all so different. Um, they're obviously playing the same part, uh, but just the way they do things are just slightly different, which is lovely for me to react very naturally to how they're coming back at me with the lines. Um, but I do love that scene. One of my favourite moments in the show is uh, Josh and Susan, they go to his apartment and it's all kitted out with, you know, a young boy's dream. And the, their lack of communication in that apartment is just, it's, it's rolling laughter throughout that. I really enjoy like every, you know, 10, 20 seconds, we get a good chuckle and it just rolls all the way through until some big belly laugh, laughs. And I just, I real feel, feel very connected to the audience on that. Kimberly Walsh tries her hardest, bless her, uh, but she's got some comedic chops. They really enjoy her and I, I laugh and I try not to laugh during that scene. Do you know what? I love playing comedy. I do. Um, and I always do seem to get roles with a bit of comedy in. This is a really fun one, actually, to play. I do really like that side of, um, of Susan's character. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I was saying um, to someone the other day, so far I've only fallen in love with an elf, <laughs> an ogre, and a child. Michael Rose and David Morgan Young, uh, who are the producer and director of this piece, um, I've known them for over 30 years, and uh, I think they're fantastic uh, 
producers and directors because their production values are very high. They spend a lot of money on it. So I knew it was going to be a, a well-done piece. And they're always very good at feel-good shows as well. And uh, I like an audience to feel better about themselves and their lives when they leave the theatre than when they came in. I think audiences um, can expect an absolutely brilliant night out. There's no real thinking about it. They can sit there and be absolutely entertained by the spectacle, by the performances, by the music, um, by the costumes, by everything. It just looks beautiful. And, you know, I defy anybody to walk out not smiling. There is that kind of rolling laughter the whole way through, which I think is quite nice to just sit there and be like entertained and just have a bit of a giggle the whole way through the show. I mean, it's good to laugh, right? In the West End, there's a little bit of a smorgasbord of, uh, of options. You can go for some real like dark, um, deep, woke, you know, new stuff, or you can go like big cheese fest and we're the cheesy side of life. So, um, you know, whatever tickles your pickle on that night. To sum up the show in one word, it's a really predictable one. It's big. It's magical. It's just fun. There is no one word for Big the Musical. It's lots of words. It's, uh, it's everything for everybody, and people are nuts for it. Rock, 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 rock.